Hello everyone, I'm going to present to you how to manually compute and analyze RCBD data or randomized complete block design. Before you do that, in conducting the experiment, you have to present first the problem. In this case, uh, the problem is what is the effect of using organic fertilizer on the yield, on the yield of okra? In the problem, you will see the independent variable using organic fertilizer that's the independent variable and the dependent variable is the yield of okra so we have to specify the treatments in this experimental design we have five treatments treatment zero or control no organic fertilizer Used, then we have treatment 1 500 kilogram per hectare, treatment 2 1000, treatment 3 1500, treatment 4 2000 kilogram per hectare of organic fertilizer, fertilizer application. We'll be using three replicates, and you'll see we have five number of treatments. We'll be using 0 0.05 critical level for the F test or significance test or 95% confidence level. It is important to state the null hypothesis as the basis for the experiment. It says there will be no significant difference in the yield performance of okra at different levels of organic fertilizer application. The alternative hypothesis is the opposite there will be significant difference in the yield performance of okra at different levels of organic fertilizer application or at least one or more are significantly different from its other this is the field day out of the experiment you will see that this is block one block two block three that represent three replicates and the treatments, different treatments are randomly assigned to different subplots within the block. This is the model of the analysis of variance, which is the basis for computation of uh, whether your data is significant or not. So we have the source of variation, degrees of freedom, sum of squares, many squares and if value calculated this is very important now we'll go to the yield you will see you have the different treatments from control to this last treatment for block one you have the following yield for block two block three so you are going to control uh, co compute the total and the mean as well as the black mean and the overall mean. So when you do that, you have the different totals here. And the mean also, you have the different totals, uh, different mean. From this, we can calculate the total. And the total divided by the number of entries here, we have uh, 15 all in all. So you'll get a grand mean of 3.52. So you will see that we have different means from the different treatments. How do we compute that? As I have mentioned, the grand total will be the sum or sigma observations, which is, if we're going to look at it back, 2.2 2 plus, 2 .2 plus 1.10 plus 2.0 up to 5.1. The total will be 52.8. So, the number of observations multiplied, uh, that is equal to the number of blocks multiplied by 5 treatments, you have 15. So, to calculate the grand mean, the summation of, of, of all observations divided by 15, you'll get 3.52, and that is shown in the data. We have also the computation for the black total, as we have uh, shown here.
the most important thing here in the computation is the determination of the correction factor. The correction factor is calculated by this method. Summation of all the observations square divided by uh, the number of blocks multiplied by the number of rows. So in this case, you have 52.8 square divided by 15, you'll get 185.856. That will be your correction factor. And we're going to use that in the next computations. First, we find the total is S or sum of the squares. That is equal to sigma uh, observations minus correction factor. So you will see here, 2.3 squared plus 3.0 squared, meaning you're going to, you're going to go back here. Its interest here will be squared. And the answer minus the correction factor, you'll get 14.46. We also calculate the uh, replicate uh, sum of squares. That will be the summation of the square of its block total divided by the number of treatments minus correction factor. So in this case, you have the block here, 16.4. square plus 17.7 square plus 18.7 square the answer divided by 5 minus the correction correction factor and you'll have 0 0.532 for the treatment is s or sum of the squares we take the rows total here we square this divided by the number of replication minus correction, correction factor, you'll get 13.24. And from the total SS, we subtract replicate SS and treatment SS, and we obtain 0 0.688. Then we plug into the ANOVA table, so you will see here the treatment minus one four for the DF. The sum of squares is 13.24 divided by 4, you'll get this value. 0 0.532 divided by 2, you'll get this value. Likewise, 0 0.688 divided by 8, you'll get this value. That will be your main squares. To Calculate the F value, the MS or main squares is divided by the error. And this one is divided by the MS error. So you'll obtain this calculated F value 3.310 divided by 0 0.086. Likewise here. Okay, here is the uh, computation beforehand. So you have uh, this 14.46 total. Uh, 0 0.532, 0 0.688. We will be using the F, the statistical table, to further analyze the ANOVA at 95% percent confidence level. So this will be the table that we're going to use. We will see that here is the degrees of freedom in the numerator that's for if the tabulated value. Well here is the degrees of freedom of the error. So you will see from our table we have the degrees of freedom for treatment is 4. 
and the degrees of freedom of error is 8 at 0 0.05 level you'll have this value 3.84 for the replication you have uh, two degrees of freedom and the error at 0, 0.0 uh, the degrees of freedom of error at 0 0.05 is 4.46 and we're going to use that to compare the values of the calculated value in the ANOVA table so for the treatment the degrees of freedom is for an error of degrees of freedom of error the calculated value is 38.49 while the tabulated f value is 3.84 for the replication you have 4.46 versus this uh, calculated of 3.09 so this asterisk here means the calculated value is very much larger than the tabulated if value so it's uh, highly significant while this one is less than this value it is not significant at uh, 0 0.05 critical value so you will see that the treatments applied is significantly different between treatment means at 0 0.05 level while replication shows that there is no significant difference noted so our conclusion reject the null hypothesis for treatment means meaning the means of the different treatments are significantly different so with that we need to do uh, the post hoc test to find out whether the treatment means vary and which treatments vary so in this case we'll be using the dmrt or duncan's multiple range test in the post hoc analysis for five means to compare them from each other our procedure first rank the means from highest to lowest or from lowest to highest so in this case i did a ranking from uh, highest to lowest and these are the different uh, mean yield so they have the ranks so one two three four five and from that we can compare them but first we have to calculate the standard error our ms error is 0 0.086 and the r or number of replication is 3 so you have 0 0.086 divided by 3 take the square root you have plus or minus 0 0.169 to compare the values we have to calculate also the least significant range so the standard error multiplied by the SSR or significant student range derived from the DMRT table and we'll be using uh, 0 0.05 level in this example uh, remember that the is 0 0.169 the DMRT table shows that at 8 degrees of freedom on uh, the number of treatments here which corresponds to their rank and from number five down here we have the value for number two or rank two 3.261 3.398 3.475 and 3.521 so these are the values that we need for further analysis so we just sum up the rank and critical q values for two three four five to find the less significant frames, we multiply standard error and the critical rank value. So we this is uh, rank 5 value multiplied by 0 0.169, we obtain the 0 0.595. And the rest uh, follows this procedure. Let's uh, summarize. 
the difference between the mean or mean yield of treatment for and control is 2.74. The LSR of round 5 is 0 0.95. So if we are going to compare the mean difference and the LSR, it is greater than the LSR. So we conclude that there is a significant difference between the mean of treatment 4 versus treatment 0 or control. Likewise, the mean yield of t treatment 4 versus treatment 1, 1.8 is greater than the LSR, so significantly different. However, the difference between t treatment 3 and treatment 2, the difference is 0 0.23 and the LSR is 0 0.551. We conclude that there is no significant difference. This is less than the LSR. So this is how we compare and conclude if there is a significant difference between the main differences when we compare the mean yield of the different treatments. To make a report, we usually use this format. So we have control, Treatment 1, treatment 2, treatment 3, treatment 4. These are the mean yield. This is the interpretation. Those treatments with different upper scripts or letters are significantly different. If two treatments have the same letter, meaning the mean yield or means of those treatments are not significantly different like treatment 2 and treatment 3. Treatment 4 is significantly different to all the treatments. Likewise, your treatment 1 is significantly different than control, meaning it's better than control. But for all the treatments, the highest performance is shown by treatment 4 because it shows that from the data it has the highest mean yield in tons per hectare. This is brought to you by Pinoy Bedrock Science. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.